This is the final number 10 step in my 10 step series with the main goal being to try to teach one how to take compelling underwater pictures and avoid mistakes, mishaps, and miss opportunities that I have made over my career as a, as a recreational diver and photographer. Uh, step 10, review, modify, and show your images. One of the most important things is always review your images between the dives, okay? At least at night before the next dive, dive, dive day. You can catch so many errors and make appropriate adjustments and corrections without waiting until the whole dive trip's over and then be set up for disappointment. I have found, for instance, on one day of diving, I had the wrong ISO setting. My ISO was set at 800, okay? I didn't, my, my, my histogram, the light level looked okay, but it wasn't until I looked on my laptop in the hotel, I realized there was a lot of noise and the quality of the images was not good because the entire day, my camera was set on high ISO. Most of those pictures did not work, but I was able to easily set the ISO back to 200 and the pictures the next day came out fine. If I hadn't looked at that that night, the whole dive trip would have been ruined with regard to photographs. I've done the same thing with white balance. Once I find that, found that my JPEG size and quality was set on small instead of large, okay? One time I found that the autofocus was broken on my fisheye lens. Now, with a wide angle photography, you get pretty good depth of field, but it's still nice to have your autofocus working. I was able to get the autofocus to, to clean up the little th connections. The autofocus started working, and for the rest of the trip, my autofocus worked. Another thing, go over your images, delete the poor images, unless you're using them for teaching or a specific example. Look at the image and delete it. Just save your best images, okay? Then, modify your images. You do not have to spend a lot of time. I don't have much time to spend. I do very judicious photoshopping. I'll crop the image, remove backscatter, and make little adjustments in light, color, and contrast. I do not spend, my goal is to get the best picture out of the camera, okay? But do spend some time modifying your images. And then, of course, back them up once or twice and organize them. For instance, I have a specific folder for each dive trip and I save each image very simply. The unmodified version, the high resolution JPEG for printing, and a low resolution JPEG for a PowerPoint presentation. That's it. But at least be organized because over time you can accumulate an overwhelming amount of images. If you don't know where to find them or where they are, what's the point? The last thing, Show your images to family, friends, other divers. You know, it's fun to share what you found. And also you get feedback and you can learn from others and others can show you their images. And one last thing, only show your best images, okay? If you take 14 images of a subject, show the best one. It's boring to show all of them. And it, you know, people will sometimes say, how'd you, get the, how'd you get such good pictures? And it's because I don't show all the bad and mediocre pictures that I take. Just show your best images. I just want to show you a couple examples. Okay, I'm just going to show you with even a few simple modifications that might, it'll take less than one to two minutes what you can do. Here's a picture of a porcupine fish, a lot of backscatter. I just made a few simple modifications. I cropped it, got a little tighter crop, brightened it up a little, eliminated some backscatter, and it turns out to be a nice picture. Same thing with this. Picture of an angelfish, I almost deleted it. A lot of backscatter, the composition didn't seem that interesting. I cropped it somewhat, removed some backscatter, and it turned out to be what I thought was one of my better images on the dive trip. One other example, here's a, um, a lionfish that I took in the Bahamas that I almost deleted, just didn't do that much for me. I cropped it and changed the orientation such I almost, like, as I almost framed it with the fins. I had the diagonal thing going with its fins and I have the eye right in between that. It ended up being one of my favorite pictures of the trip, just from very minimal and judicious uh, uh, modifying. In fact, I'll show you a picture of this uh, fish. In fact, here's a picture of this lionfish. It turned out to be one of my favorite pictures of the trip. I enlarged it, framed it, and to this day I have it hanging in my living room. So this concludes the 10 step series on how to take compelling images and minimize mistakes 
and mishaps. I kept everything short and punchy because I know your time is valuable. Check out my website, www.theaquaticeye.com. I would be happy to get any feedback or answer any questions I could and check out my other tutorials which go in a little more depth about specific techniques and subjects. And one final thing, this was a very short overview. It's always fun to uh, read and um, about techniques. I've read many books and by far the best one, in my opinion, is Martin Edge, The Underwater Photography. A lot of what I've said comes right out of this book. It is just a wonderful book. He gives you examples. He's, he will teach you so much. I've looked at coffee table books by masters like David Dubolet, Water, Light, and Time. There's various wonderful books out there. I don't want to show you the whole stack of books, but you can sure learn a lot just from reading and look at what under, other underwater photographers do and get ideas from them. You can also check out my book, The Aquatic Eye. You can check that out at my website. At any rate, uh, I would appreciate any of your comments and thank you for your attention.